Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habati fillah The dunya, the life of this world can be deceiving for all of us uh, There are many things to distract us There are many things to take us from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal And there are many things just to busy our hearts with and so it's important to remind ourselves with the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to remember the Akhirah, to remember the, the hereafter, the life after this, this life. Because this life is temporary. All of us will depart from this life. And we have to realize that and be cognizant of that on a daily basis. Remind ourselves that death awaits us and death awaits those we love. So not to become so attached with our hearts to this life. And Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Arba'un, idha kunna fika fala alayka ma fataka min al-dunya. Hifth al-amana. وَصِدْقُ حَدِيثٍ وَحُسْنُ خَلِيكَةٍ وَعِفَّةٌ فِي دُعْمَةٍ أخرجه إمام أحمد والحاكم So in this hadith عن عبد الله بن عامر رضي الله تعالى عنهما he said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said four characteristics that if you contain them, meaning if you possess them, then you will not miss anything from this life, miss anything uh, from the dunya. There will, there will, this won't be a, a fitna for you. He said, Hifda amana, that if you contain these characteristics, that it, it's self sufficient. It, it'll suffice you from what you missed in this life. Hifd amana, per, um, that you preserve your covenants or your trust, you fulfill your trust. Wasidq hadith. And that you are truthful in your speech. And righteous or good manners. And modesty with regarding eating. And modesty regarding uh, eating refers to that you eat from that which is lawful. You eat from that which is halal. Ahabatifillah, in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is in Imam Ahmed, uh, in his Musnad, and Al-Hakam fi Mustadrak, we learned that there are traits that the believer should possess in order to protect his or herself from the fitna of, the, of this life. And that if Allah has favored them with these characteristics, then that will suffice them. The first being that they preserve their trust in covenants so that they are not a person who breaks their promises and breaks their trust and their contracts and so on and so forth. And the opposite of that, if we look at other hadith, we'll see that those are the characteristics of the munafiqun. And those are the characteristics of those who possess nifaq. One of them is that they don't preserve their covenants. They break their covenants. And that they lie. So those are characteristics of the munafiqin. Letting us know that these four characteristics are characteristics of the mu'minin. And as the Prophet والسلام, said, that they will suffice you. They will make you self-sufficient in this life for whatever you missed in this life. 
so that you preserve your trust in your covenants. Secondly, that you are uh, truthful in your speech. So strive your best to be upright in your speech, to tell the truth. Don't lie. And the third characteristic is that you uh, have good manners in general. Um, so we know that the, the mu'min, that they strive to have righteous conduct with people, that the way they deal with people, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, that they deal with them with, with righteousness, in a, in a righteous, with taking the, the better of the routes, which is having good conduct. And the Prophet ﷺ said, He said, there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of the mu'min, of the believer, than righteous conduct, than having good manners. So strive your utmost to be good in your characteristics. Be good in your manners with how you have uh, you relate to others. And the opposite of that is the person who has wicked uh, characteristics, a, a, a wicked character, and wicked conduct with others, which is the sifat of one of the characteristics of those people who disbelieve or the people who have uh, wicked mannerisms. So Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Iman, they strive to have righteous conduct with the people. And then he said, وَعِفَّفِي دُعْمَ That uh, the person, it is explained, that this means that they only eat from halal. So being balanced, eating healthy, eating from that which is righteous, which is halal. Being haris on that. Being haris uh, on gaining righteous earnings and eating only from that which is lawful for you. Sheikh Salman, Rahmatullah he mentions about this hadith, as far as the general meaning of this hadith, he says, In the nasa fi ta'amalihim ma'adunya sinfain. He said that people are of two types in the way in which they relate to this, this world, or the way they, they, uh, the way they relate in this world. Sinth ja'alaha fi yadihi fattakhdaha mutiyatihi ila akhira. One of them, meaning one of those people who is given the dunya, or how they relate to the dunya, there are people who that when they are given that which is in the dunya, that they use it for the hereafter. And then he mentioned the second the second uh, type of people. So he mentions the second type of person with regards to uh, how they deal with this life. He says the second type is the one who takes what he is given, meaning what he's given in this life, and he consumes this life, and it fills his heart. It fills his heart, meaning the dunya, the love of this world, fills his heart. And he becomes fulfilled, or he believes that he is fulfilled by the beauty of it. And he follows his desires, or the desires of this world. So he indulges in the dunya in any kind of fashion because his fulfillment is with the dunya. And he said the first character, the first person, that this person, that this leads him to Jannah. Meaning that they don't take the, the, this worldly life into their heart and become obsessed with it and allow for it to distract them from the hereafter. And the second type of person, the one who becomes fulfilled with the dunya, who is consumed by the dunya, consumed by, by materialism and just fulfilling their desires, whether it's halal or haram, and, and, and that's all they do is indulge in that, 
that this leads them to the hellfire. Some of the benefits of this hadith that the Sheikh mentions, he says, first, what we learn is that it's an obligation to fulfill your obligations and trusts. And to also be truthful in speech. And to strive to be righteous in conduct. Husn al to have good manners and good ways in which you treat and deal with people. And that you should strive to eat from that which is righteous and halal. And then he mentioned the second benefit of this hadith is that it's an obligation that we learn from this hadith that it's an obligation to give precedence to those things which relate to the hereafter over those things which relate to this life. So that means that we should strive with our utmost to do those things which are going to benefit us in the hereafter. Now, with that being said, giving precedence to the hereafter over the dunya does not mean that we leave off this worldly life. That does not mean that we should be embrace poverty. You know, we should strive to be poor. Or we should strive, you know, that we shouldn't strive to obtain wealth and use it for lawful means. But it means not to let those things consume our hearts. Not let those things busy us from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not let those things distract us from the halal and take us to the muharramat. So everything is a balance. It's taking, putting everything in perspective. So the mu'min is using this life in order to achieve the excellence of the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from Ahli Iman and bless us not to consume this life in our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Shaykh with Jannah for dose for pointing out these great benefits for us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.